The little-known XP-67 Bat warplane prototype was the McDonnell Aircraft Company's first attempt to enter the aviation industry before the United States joined World War II. The Moon Bat was a single-seat, long-range, twin-engine fighter interceptor aircraft. It was the response to a U.S. Army Air Corps request for a warplane capable of destroying enemy bomber formations. McDonnell's design was sleek and advanced for its time, and it had the potential to become one of the fastest and most lethal aircraft in the U.S. Army Air Corps. But technology could not catch up to its novel concept. The bat was underpowered and never achieved the desired top speed of 475 miles per hour with its full arsenal of six 50 caliber machine guns and an M4 cannon to destroy enemy bombers. A fatal crash in late 1944 was the last straw, and the Army and Air Force moved on to other projects. Still, the knowledge obtained from the Moon Bat would incentivize McDonald to produce some of America's most influential military aircraft over the following decades, and even help NASA develop the Mercury and Gemini space capsules. Humble Beginnings McDonnell Aircraft Corporation is known as one of the finest aerospace manufacturers in the U.S. It developed the FH-1 Phantom, the F-2H Banshee, the F-3H Demon, the supersonic F-101 Voodoo, and more importantly, the F-15 Eagle. Most of its aircraft saw action during World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and the Middle East. Its growth is more impressive considering its young founder, James Smith McDonnell, created the company with the sole intention of developing an ambitious aircraft of his own. The American aviator, engineer, and businessman was born in April of 1899 in Denver, Colorado. He graduated from Princeton University in 1921 and earned a Master's of Science in Aeronautical Engineering from MIT in 1925. Once graduated, aircraft designer Tom Towell hired the aviation enthusiast to join the Stout Metal Airplane Division of the Ford Motor Company. He eventually moved to the Huff Dayland Airplane Company to continue working on metal monoplanes. After several years working for other aviation companies and the Army Air Service, McDonnell became fascinated with developing an aircraft with a blended wing design. Still, no one wanted to invest in such a risky project, as an aircraft of this type had never seen the sky. In 1928, McDonnell founded J.S. McDonnell and Associates. He then developed his first aircraft, the Doodlebug, hoping to win a prize pool of $100,000. After dissolving his firm during the Great Depression in the 1930s, McDonnell held tight to his design. He worked for the Glenn L. Martin Company for almost a decade before leaving in 1938 to pursue his engineering desires and continue developing his design. McDonnell wanted to get into the game of aircraft manufacturing and not merely build parts for other manufacturers. McDonnell Aircraft Corporation was then founded in 1939 in St. Louis, Missouri, with less than 20 employees. In 1940, the U.S. Army Air Corps issued a request for proposal calling for a high-speed, long-range, high-altitude interceptor intended to destroy enemy bombers. The request seemed borderline impossible. The Army Air Corps basically wanted aviation companies to develop an aircraft that could outperform every warplane the U.S. had at its disposal at the time. But James McDonnell knew his time had come. An old design resurfaces. As the war in Europe eventually turned global, the United States was doubtful to enter the dispute, opting instead for isolationism. Nevertheless, the small American army began to adopt measures in case of conflict. War production steadily increased, and the barracks started to receive flocks of young men eager to fight once again. Aircraft production also grew considerably, and the Army Air Corps took the necessary measures to innovate and train as many pilots as possible for an almost imminent collision with the Japanese. McDonnell believed his forgotten blended wing design filled the Army Air Corps specifications and applied for their request, submitting drawings and detailed information of the unnamed aircraft that would eventually become the XP-67 Moonbat. This first design was simply dubbed Model 1. According to Bill Walton from Aviation Club, quote, the McDonnell Model 1 was initially designed to be powered by an unusual geared drivetrain with a single Allison V3420 engine buried in the fuselage, powering twin wing-mounted pusher propellers in the wings via twin 90-degree extension shafts. The airframe was flat from end to end and featured a single-seat pressurized cockpit. Its design quickly earned it the nickname the Bat, or Moon Bat. The armament for the XP-67 consisted of two configurations. The first was composed of six 12.7mm machine guns with four additional 20mm cannons. The second replaced the four cannons with a single 75mm one to destroy enemy bombers. McDonnell promised that the aircraft would reach a top speed of 473 miles per hour with a weight of 20,000 pounds. The Moonbat immediately attracted the attention of the Army. McDonnell's aircraft truly seemed like the interceptor the Air Force has needed, but there were also serious concerns over mechanical challenges and its peculiar engine configuration. After analyzing the proposals from multiple aircraft companies, the Army ranked McDonnell's Bat number 21 out of 23. 
Nevertheless, the diligence displayed by the company's first participation in an army request inspired the Army Air Corps officers, and they granted McDonnell a contract to continue developing his aircraft. The BATS Model 2 was presented on June 30, 1941. It featured an engine redesign, but the Air Corps rejected it again and ordered an improved version. Model 2A followed in April of 1941. This iteration featured a more conventional layout, with a pair of engines and wing-mounted nacelles with four-bladed propellers and a tractor configuration. The BAT still kept its unique blended shaping, laminar airflows, pressurized cockpit, and low drag joints between the wings and fuselage. The Army was appeased, and in September of 1941, granted McDonnell a contract for a fully functional prototype and a wind tunnel model. The aircraft was designated XP-67 BAT, or Moon BAT. The XP-67 Moon BAT the XP-67 Moonbat was the first prototype McDonnell had tested, and the usual problems surfacing during this phase almost doubled. Additionally, the Bat required extensive wind tunnel tests due to its unique design, and the engines proved a significant issue. The Army contract specified that the XP-67 had to be powered by two Continental 14-1431 inverted V-12 engines fitted with turbo superchargers. The engines dated back to 1932 and were designed by Army engineers at Wright Field, Ohio with World War I technology. The V-12s allegedly produced 1,600 horsepower, but in reality, they never went beyond 1,080 horsepower, even when turbocharged. When McDonnell found out that the engines were underpowered, he requested the Air Corps to facilitate them with new ones for the BAT, but the Army refused. The BAT flew conducted ground trials in December 1943 and was damaged by fires in both engine nacelles due to a malfunction in the exhaust system. After being repaired, it flew for the first time on January 6, 1941. With Chief Test Pilot Ed Elliott at the controls, the Bat flew successfully for over six minutes before engine problems forced him to land. After a fourth flight test, the engine bearings burned out for a second time, grounding the aircraft for repairs. Army pilots who tested the Bat later said it had an excellent cockpit layout, outstanding roll rate, and good stability, but the cons outnumbered the pros. The Bat felt underpowered due to its poor climb rate, prolonged acceleration, and stretched takeoff. After several modifications, the BAT was tested again in September of 1944. During the flight test, the starboard engine caught fire, and test pilot Ed Elliott had to conduct another emergency landing at Lambert Field in St. Louis. Just when Elliott thought that he was safe, the BAT's starboard landing gear brakes failed, and the flames quickly spread towards the aft fuselage. Elliott survived, but the only finished BAT prototype was destroyed. A second prototype was only 15% complete at the time, and the Army decided to cancel the XP-67 BAT project in October of 1944. Legacy The first jet engines were just around the corner, and the United States was already looking at the next generation of aircraft that would lead America to victory in World War II. Although the BAT had a unique design and an armament to reckon with, it became a textbook example of how a troublesome and underpowered engine can ruin a brilliant aircraft design. But the Moonbat's failure was not the end for McDonnell. More than 5,000 workers would eventually join the McDonnell Corporation ranks when World War II came to an end, and the company became a pivotal fighter aircraft supplier to the U.S. Army Air Corps. It would go on to produce legendary aircraft designs like the FH-1 Phantom, Banshee, Demon, the F-101 Voodoo, and the F-15 Eagle, and also help NASA develop space capsules. But it all started with a unique yet pioneering design. Tell us in the comments if you think the Bat could have been able to take the fight into the heart of Germany with its combat configuration. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to watch more content about legendary aircraft.